Well, Florian, it's great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out today. And I would like to begin our conversation with what we've all lived through for the last three and a half years or so, getting through the pandemic. How did you get through it and how did it change you? Oh. I got I got through I got barely through it. <laughs> um so um well let, let me start let me start at the beginning. Um because I um in uh, 2018 I made the decision to um uh, to work uh, 100% um as a coach. Um and uh, before that, I was uh, working part time as a p coach for personal development, and part time um, for a worldwide business school, and I took care of the alumni base um, as a career consultant. And I wanted to step out of the, the organization to be completely free because by that time I was living in Zanzibar quite quite a bit. Um, I had a little hotel there um, that I was uh, just turning over, and I wanted to do that that coaching completely location independent, and um, that proved to be very difficult in the year of two thousand nineteen because I was already on the boat, and with internet connections and the weather changing, and so I just figured out that I would like to not have regular conversations every every single day but like sum it up and make um something like a mastermind which is like a whole day um event somewhere physical and to have people with a like-minded background and do um, a mixture of a, of a group activity and one-on-one -on -one coaching so i did all of my preparations for that and that was uh scheduled for um for march 2020 wow. and um, to have a backup uh, out of a completely different um, business field, um, I founded a company in Tanzania and I organized um, Kilimanjaro trips and safaris. And I got a couple of bookings for that winter and I was quite confident. And then everything was canceled. Everything. I mean, I couldn't do my, pre I didn't have any online coaching at that time. Um, all the present stuff was canceled. All the tours for Kilimanjaro were cancelled. I mean, there were travel restrictions. You had no idea how long it's going to take because I was digitally a digital nomad. I had no um, like social security backup or or anything else. So within weeks, I was completely screwed. And, and uh, so, like basically, credit card debt was piling up because I thought, okay, it's going to be two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and maybe two months, and and then. So I was still, I still didn't have a backup plan. And um, by by March, I thought this is going to take a while. And now that it doesn't matter anyway, I can completely reinvent myself and i thought it is a good time to start the masterminds as an online thing because i thought okay we can we can have shorter meetings we can have them more regularly um i can go down with the pricing um so in the end the value for the client increases um but i don't have to pay for all the catering and at the hotel and everything so my costs are going down and um i started with the six people that i wanted to have in a mastermind for like personal exchange and we started this completely for free so and then this went so well that after 2 months all the participants said flo we like this idea but we do not want to continue unless you charge us for it. And then I said, okay, I can, I can arrange that. And then I had ideas for other masterminds and then they were referring me. And out of these masterminds came one-on-one uh, -on -one coachings. So what the pandemic did is um, it uh, helped me to find a very, very personal online style. Before that, I thought it's either personal or online. So online has to be clickable, downloadable, um, scalable, so that you record this and people can just buy it and then consume it. And um, during the pandemic, especially in the at the very beginning when I thought, okay, now 
but I'm screwed anyway. I don't if I if I don't make if I make money or don't make money, or if I try to make money and I don't do don't make it, or if I just don't plan to make any money, it doesn't make a difference. So I completely committed on service. And I said to myself, I'm going to make and create the best mastermind that I can possibly do and create a value. And this mastermind is still it's still a very exclusive, very small group. And since I think February or March 2020, we meet every Monday morning at seven o'clock from seven to eight. And um, what participants in that group say is, this is, I hate to wake up early, but this is the place that I, or this is the, the meeting that I never miss because this is the place where I can ask the questions that I cannot ask anywhere else because there's no judgment in the group. And um, um, and I think I found my, I found my style. Yeah. This, I can be, I, I, it, it can be on a screen and still I take my, my ego out of the way. I take the pressure out of the way. I take the time. Um, and I had life changing conversations over the last three years. And all of a sudden, Starlink, <laughs> Starlink started to work, so I can work from. So I'm I'm living full time on a boat now. I'm on the Mediterranean now. Um, we are talking through ta Starlink right now, so it wouldn't matter if I'm here or anchored or in the U.S. or even on the Atlantic Ocean. We could still have the same conversation, um, and all of a sudden, I am as free as I have never been before. I needed to downsize a lot. Um, and that made me very flexible for now. So, so a long answer. <laughs> yeah, I love it. No, that great. That gives me a great timeline. So when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Rich. <laughs> well, it's my parents get in trouble for that because, you know, I'm, I, I grew up in Germany. Uh, West Germany in the 80s so that is a bit conservative and uh, like everybody has to fit in and everything is going according to plan um, and you need to have a real job and you have to study and then you work at that same job and maybe in the same company for the rest of your life and when I went to kindergarten so when I was three years old um, everybody had to say what they want to be when they are old and the, the fireman policeman astronaut and I said I would like to be a boss <laughs> Nice. And then they they called my parents and said, "What am I teaching? What are they teaching their son?" Um, so I never had a clear understanding what I want to do. Um, I was interested in so many different aspects of life that I um, that I could not stick to one topic for very long. That I, um, as soon as somebody interested me in in school, I had the best grade. And as soon as it didn't interest me, even if it was an easy class, I was all, I was almost failing. And then I did not know what to study. I did not. And then I picked something because it had something to do with about everything was agriculture. Agriculture teaches you about everything about life. I mean, for, where is it coming from? How is it produced? Where is it growing? How is it then produced into food? How is it sold, shipped, marketed? So you have the whole aspect. And I found this super interesting. And I had no idea what I'm going to do with that. And then I started a, um, a well, a part-time job at an American company, um, an executive search. And I was a researcher there. And um, a new um, director for the financial department started. And um, she was uh, about 10 years older than me. And she needed somebody to help on a research project. And we got along so well that we um, managed some really big projects um, by the two of us. And then they offered me a consultant contract. And all of a sudden, I was in that talking to people business. Um, and uh, I stayed there until Lehman Brothers failed. And that shook up the whole the whole industry. And then I had to reconsider myself. What do I really want to do? And um, I found out that the common thing is I'm always interested. I'm, I always have an entrepreneurial mind, mindset. I always want to create something. So give me a give me give me a problem and a bit of resource and let me figure out how to how to do that. I if I go into an office and I'm working through the same stacks of work every single day, I I feel like my life is over. I feel like I'm doing this until the, the end of
rest of my life. I always need that bit of excitement that I'm excited to get out of bed tomorrow because something is going to happen. Yeah. And that is something if you have entrepreneurial power, it doesn't, that it, it can be raising a family, that can be having a farm, that can be having a, a coaching practice, that can be having a sail around the world adventure, but that you are responsible for your own doing. And I was always interested in personal growth i always asked myself what is why why am i here what's the reason for life and um so i started reading um like a lot of spiritual books when i was in my in my teens and had no idea what to do with that because i thought oh that's not a real business and traveling the world is not a real business and well just talking to people is not a real business so you needed in germany you need to have something with an engineering degree <laughs> yeah yeah. Um, so this is why I did not follow a clear career path. Now, in the hindsight, looking back, it all made sense because it was always with that entrepreneurial spirit. But while doing it, it fail it it felt like I'm on the wrong track often. So talk to me a little bit about who's been a hero for you in your life. Who has inspired you? Yeah, that's, I'm not so sure. And I think that is a, a reason why I became the coach I am. I'm, I'm writing that on my, on my website as well somewhere. Why am I, so I want to, I want to be the, the mentor that I never had. I want to have that father figure um, to look up to that mentor that um, in some aspects more senior person that is not telling you what to do but the one who's empowering you to, to go your own way like hey, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a helping hand I'm not doing the job for you and I'm not telling you which job to do but I'm offering you a helping hand and I will be the sparing partner and in my direct in my direct um, surrounding I was lacking that person there was one um there was one uncle of mine who completely did not fit into the family and he was somebody that i looked up to the most when i was a kid because he was a musician he was a rock star he was standing on stage um he was always having parties he had lots of friends that had no kids that made him a little bit more flexible and he was like traveling a lot and uh, very sportive and um, he's still one of the people that I, um, that I'm the closest with. Um, but in the end, I always knew I don't want to be him. I do not want to be like him. He was inspiring that he was different than the others in the family. Um, but I did not have that one person where I always knew I could go to. And I started to, um, um, no, not I was not able to express my thoughts and my feelings properly because I, there was nobody that I could share that with. And it took me a lot, a lot of wrong turns in my 20s where I made, from my point of view now, wrong decisions, wrong business decisions, wrong um, personal decisions, wrong marriage decisions <laughs> um, because I was just, I was, thriving or I wasn't really thriving I was trying to achieve something that looks like success on the outside so that other people see me as successful that I so that I can start living the crazy life that I would really like to live and I thought if I had all the money in the world I would probably sell everything I have and just travel with a backpack around the world because then I have the security I do not need to Cling, cling to the stuff that I own because I have all the money in the world so I can buy it anytime I need it. And now I can let go of everything because if I want something, I could buy that. And that was a, that was a breakthrough moment for myself. That if I had all the money in the world, I would try not to use it. So why would I try to make all the money in the world while I'm still young to wait until I'm maybe old and broken or heart disease and then try to live the life that I always wanted to have lived in the first place. 
and that's when I I started to 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 downsize reorientate, um, get rid of most of my stuff, started living different, um, started the coaching, um, the coaching training, and um, then traveled more, wrote about the travel, well, started my Africa experiences, and so on. So of all the places that you've traveled to and explored, what's been one of the most surprisingly beautiful or magical places you've been to? Surprisingly beautiful. Um, yeah, it's if I when I think about it, it's not that surprising. Um, but as a generalization, um, what I did not, what I had not expected before, is but that the the simpler, the the simpler and the rougher a country or a countryside is the more fascinating it is so if you go into um if you go into the the jungle into the rainforest um we don't see you don't see a lot i mean everything is green it's just leaves it's like walls of leaves so you you can see about this far um but if you are if you are if you're walking on your own alone through sahara i did a i did a solo sahara tour one time because about 10 exactly 10 years ago because i thought now i'm an adventurer and what happened was i was afraid most of the time um but i i, I survived i found uh I, I found i found water and i found my way out again but this vastness of nothingness has some absolute beauty and a lot of the times that is that is the same in um like if you travel through morocco um the the denser it is populated and the more there is the more confusing and often often somehow dirty it is but these landscapes that are completely completely clear where there's very little distraction they have a like a mesmerizing beauty probably that's why i love the ocean so much i'm not really an absolute water person but being on the ocean with that horizon is just magnificent and there's not much to distract you yeah for sure so of all of the things that you've done and 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 you've come a long way in your life what are you the proudest of that you've done that i found my way out i struggled i struggled a long time with my self-worth because I thought that I have to fit in, that I have to play by the rules. And um, and and when I did play by the rules, I was always quite good. And then I was very, very fast. I was bored. And then I somehow screwed up because I just, I, I didn't see the point in it anymore. Um, and, uh, and that I really felt good was when i started step when i started to step out of of the routine of society um and i got a lot of uh, criticism criti criticism for that so people especially my surroundings i didn't like that i thought now why why who do you who do you think you are you don't have that you don't have to go to the office who do you think that you can live on a sailboat and have vacation all year round well it's not vacation i mean it's most of the time it's even more difficult um and oh you just uh, post these nice photos of you because you are you are a poser yeah no it's that's the that's the sunny side of my life, and I I chose it. And when I when I sit down and and reflect, that is what I'm really proud of that I that I made it out of there, and that I take or make my own decisions now. I don't live on another person's schedule. Yeah. So everyone out there has this idea of you, family friends, everyone, you know, th those that are on your Monday morning calls, cl clients, but you are the one that's in control. 
What is your perception of you? Who do you think you are? I am. Um... So I'm the first thing that came to my mind is um, um is a bit of a, like a like a poetic answer. Um, um, what came to my mind first is that I'm a lonely soul searching for the meaning of life. And yeah. there's there's a there's a truth to that because I um, um, I asked myself, one time or a lot of times and I I found an answer one time who do I want to have been one day I'm going to be dead and I'll go with empty pockets so you can't take anything with you when you go and um, do am I really here to accumulate anything that I then want to give somebody when I'm dead or would I like to share and participate while I'm here and I found out that I want to be um, I want to be remembered as a person that people come to, to talk to and ask for advice, not in the way, tell me what to do, but that people like to tell me their thoughts, their struggles, their dreams, their desires, their passions, and that I have been a person who's able to reflect that without judgment and help them find their own way. And therefore I need to make experiences. I need to grow as a person. I need my soul to grow. I need to unfortunately see the failures from my own eyes so that I do not have the superficial, superficial uh, perspective where I teach textbook knowledge, but where I can really feel people and guide them out of where they ever, wherever they are to wherever they want to be. And therefore, I think I am and I will always be a searching soul because the if I search, I find and I grow and the more valuable I am for the people that I share my time with. So if anyone... Again, long wants, answer. <laughs> no, I love it. That's a great answer. Your answers have been very inquisitive and very well thought out. So if anyone wants to learn more about Simplicity of Happiness hire you, learn more about you and your adventures, where's the best place for them to go? Yeah, quite, quite, quite simple. I'm, well, I'm of course on, uh, on, on all the social media with my, uh, with my Slack, but the, the simple thing to remember is simplicityofhappiness.com, either one word or simplicity minus of minus happiness.com. And there's a contact, uh, contact form. I am working. So there's nothing, nothing really downloadable. Um, but I have a podcast and I'm writing articles. So if you want to find out, just click on there, have a look through there. I am giving away uh, coachings for free. That is something that came out of my, my master, my, uh, my Corona experience that I figured out, Hey, it's coaching. It's not about selling a product. It's about being of service that people want to pay for. And that is very difficult to explain. And therefore I said, well, I have certain slots every month that are free first first come first serve and i know that i have that i have conversations that are that good that they either change people's lives and they come back a couple of years later or they want more of that but there the important thing there's no no strings attached so if you want to find out just visit the website if you sign up for on the contact formula we will have a call one hour no strings attached and then you'll see what's best for you Florian, good for you, man. This has been a wonderful story. It's so great to see that, that you've, you're out there exploring the world. What a wonderful, you know, noble way of living your existence. And you, mm -hmm. you put all of this so well um, into words. So thank you for having, uh, taking a minute out and, and giving me your story. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, you bet. How do you pronounce your last name? Hornick. Okay. Wanted to make sure. Sometimes... You, you get into trouble when you assume so Florian, yes can you can you imagine can you imagine 
being at an I used to live in the US for one year with that last name. So every time that I was called out at the high school, <laughs> like Flor, so my, if you pronounce it German, it's Florian Hornig. But that's impossible for American. Yeah. So we thought it's Florian Hornig. Um, <laughs> please come to the principal office. That's wild, man. Well, Florian, this has been great, man. Continue the adventures. Enjoy your time. Thank you very much for your for your time today. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank Have a you. Good day.